it's Dr. Ken here with you again for DC Lesson 6 Part C, the final in this particular lesson. So we're going to describe how to determine the power taken by the whole series circuit and by each component in the circuit. Reasonably straightforward, thankfully, in DC circuits to determine power. Then we're going to look at some faults and their effects in a series circuit. Again, if you're uh, also uh, listening to these videos and following along in the textbook, uh, this is 6.6 .6 power in series circuits and 6.7 faults in series circuits. And then we're going to do a full lesson, all the parts A, B and C summary at the end. So power in a series circuit and uh, I'll just turn my pointer on and in our Ohm's Law wheel, this is the segment we're looking at. So we're going to be looking at power as it relates to voltage and current, power as it relates to current and resistance, and then finally power as it relates to voltage and resistance. So there are three different relationships for power just like there are for all the other aspects of Ohm's Law. But these are the three we're going to look at specifically. So how do we go about calculating total power using those formulas from our Ohm's Law wheel? Well, the first is reasonably straightforward. The total power is the product or the multiplication of the applied voltage, voltage total, and the circuit current. So you'll come across this formula again and again and again and again. It's used for power all the time. Power is simply the voltage multiplied by the current. And you'll notice that we didn't bother putting an IT in here for current total, because in a series circuit, I total is equal to the current in resistor 1 and it's also equal to the current in resistor 2 and it's also equal to the current in resistor 3 at infinitum. So total power is the current squared times the resistance. So the next equation we need to know about for power is power is I squared R. In this particular case it's I squared RT because we're particularly interested in making sure we're using the total resistance because we're after total power. So total power we want to use total resistance. So that's very very important. So this formula is also very common in the electrotechnology world. You'll often hear of I squared R losses. These are the losses in copper conductors, aluminium conductors, anything that is used for conducting electricity over a reasonably long distance. They call the losses in the conductors the I squared R losses because it's the current squared multiplied by the resistance of the conductor. So you'll quite often hear power is I squared R. And then our third one, total power is also equals the square of the applied voltage divided by the resistance. So there's this volts squared relationship between voltage and power. So it's volt squared total, remember, total volts divided by total resistance gives us total power. So all we've done there is simply explain those three equations from our Ohm's Law wheel. So calculating individual component power. Power in, say, resistor 1, in the examples that we've been using, is the product of its voltage 1 and the circuit current. And again, we end up with P1. So this is just a power in one component. So let's say it's resistor 1. So power in resistor 1 is equal to the voltage 
a cross resistor one multiplied by the current through the series circuit the current being the same through the whole circuit of course and it's also the current squared times the resistance so power one can also be the I squared multiplied by the resistor one will give us the power and then finally we can also use the voltage across the resistor and the resistance value itself so V squared for resistor 1 divided by the value of resistor 1 will give you the power for component 1 so in those three formulas which were of course the same but we were talking about the power across individual components so component 1 component 1 component 1 obviously if we're talking about component 2 or 3 then the numbers change accordingly for the component for which you're calculating the power that's being dissipated so here's a little example we've got voltage total we know we've got 20 volts across R1 and it's 100 ohms we're told that we've got a 20 ohm resistor again in series with our 100 in series with 60 so if we quickly summarize the information that we have that's what this is here just summarizing we're being asked to find the total power so one of the quickest ways we can do that is we can first of all work out what the current is well we can work out the current because we have the resistance for one component and we have the voltage for that component so that's what we're doing here we're just taking the information from this part of the diagram here and V1 divided by R1 and that's going to give us the current so down here here's the working 20 divided by 100 equals 0 0.2 of an amp or 200 milliamps working out our R total is pretty easy it's just a matter of adding up the three resistance values there they are the three resistance values added up giving us an R total of 180 then we could have used many of the power equations to work it out but the easiest one is uh, going to be the I squared R so we're going to use the I squared R and we're going to take the current I squared point zero point two squared multiplied by the total resistance and it tells us the total power because remember that's what we were chasing all the way from the top total power is going to be 7.2 watts remembering of course that power is always expressed in watts So here's the same circuit again, but this time we're going to uh, determine the power across each of the resistors across the 100 ohm, the 200 and the 60 ohm. And again, we just simply summarize the values up here and we're going to work out the power for each one. So what is power 1, power 2 and power 3 so we know that our current is 0.2 of an ohm from the previous example so it's the same example just with into working at individual powers now so we've already worked out the current and we know what our three individual resistances are and we know what the voltage across one of them is So P1, nice and easy, we can simply take the voltage across P1, which we know at 20 volts, and square it and divide it by the resistance at R1. So we're simply taking this voltage across R1, because we've already got it, and we've got this resistance, and we're putting it into here, and 
20 times 20 is 200 divided by 100 is 4 so the answer comes out at the power across here is 4 watts so there's our nice 4 watts simple and pretty straightforward power 2 we know what the current is and we know what the resistance is so we can actually just use I squared R so again our 2.2 squared which comes from our current which we already had that's it there that's this one multiply by our 20 ohms there's our 20 ohms and when we do the math we end up with 0.8 of a watt so across here we have 0 0.8 of a watt and similarly for number three we know what the current is our 60 ohms simply comes from that resistor so I squared multiplied by 60 gives us 2.4 watts so if we want to know what the total power of the circuit is we simply would go 4 plus 2.4 plus 8 would give us the total power so putting power together so total power equals power 1 plus power 2 plus power 3 so let's get into some faults but before we do that let's just make sure we've understood this putting power together in this particular little example here you'll uh, you'll notice that each of the lamps has a 2 watt power so each of these is 2 watts and you'll notice that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 there are 8 of them so it's simply 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 until I've done that eight times it's one two three four five six seven eight is 16 or I simply could have gone two times eight equals 16 watts so in a series circuit it's very important to remember that the total power is simply each of the individual powers however many there are all added together so into our final little section for series circuits finding faults in series circuits the two most common faults in any circuit are an open circuit or a short circuit a third type of fault is a change in the value of a resistance within the circuit so you might have a resistor that's normally 10 ohms and for some reason it's got really really hot and been damaged and its resistance goes from 10 ohms to 30 odd ohms so it does happen that uh, when resistances in circuits get very hot um, they actually change their resistive values so an open circuit reasonably easy um, to troubleshoot here you'll notice here that we have a 12 volt supply and remember there's a difference between applied voltages and voltage drops and it's important to understand that difference when we're troubleshooting here we have 12 volt supply we have an open circuit at this point the element has gone open circuit there is no current flow so if you get an open circuit in a series circuit you're going to get I is going to be zero amps it's going to drop to zero but you're still going to see 12 volts and you're actually going to see 12 volts across the open circuit 
12 volts across the open circuit because you're still going to see the plus and the minus of the power supply through the circuit but there's no current going to flow because of this open circuit down here so we have a voltage across here but this open circuit is what we call high impedance it's gone very very it's a, it's its ohms are very very high so high we call it an open circuit they're up in the order of tens and twenties of mega ohms so you know 10 to 20 mega ohm and we call that an open circuit so you'll notice that when you're troubleshooting a circuit like this, you've got a series set of lamps. If you get your multimeter out and measure the voltage across each lamp, the lamp that has the fault is the one where the voltage occurs. Nice and easy. Once you understand how a series circuit works and the applied voltage compared to the voltage drops in the circuit, all the lamps that are good, okay, have no voltage zero volts good lamp zero volts good lamp zero volts bad lamp has voltage across it what about a short circuit now so in a short circuit we've effectively removed the resistance of one of the elements I'll just get my pen on so we've effectively made this a short circuit in here so a short circuit has occurred so the overall resistance of the circuit so R total has gone down by X number of ohms that used to be in here so whatever resistance was in there X ohms this has now gone down and if that's the case the overall resistance has gone down as long as the voltage has stayed the same ohm's law tells us that the current must go up so straight away we can see the current was at one amp here but it's now gone to 1.3 that tells us that the overall resistance in the circuit has gone down because the current has gone up We should be getting a certain amount of volts across each of these which we will through the lamps that are on of course there's current flowing through the resistors inside these lamps and you're going to get voltage drop across the lamps so we should see the appropriate amount of voltage across each of the lamps the lamp that is short circuit has no voltage drop because it's zero ohms that's just ohms law it was up around about three volts for the lamp but it's now zero volts because it's gone short circuit there's no longer any resistance in here to cause a voltage drop therefore no still got current going through it currents going through our short circuit but no volts so zero volts here because there's virtually no resistance so that's how you can troubleshoot a short circuit in a series circuit now the one I mentioned before the changed resistance so in this little example here we've got a switch and the switch normally would be a short circuit but for some reason our switch has got dirty and our switch is now offering some resistance so we've got 12 volts here we've only got six volts across sorry four and a half volts across our lamp when it was six so we've got 4.5 here and we've got 4.5 here 
something else is actually dropping voltage so there's a resistance inside our switch and you can see here it was it's now dropping three volts so three volts is dropped across here and that resistor is probably putting out some heat the switch is getting hot because these contacts in the switch are not making properly so you can see here if I added those two voltages together that's going to be 9 volts but the applied voltage is still 12 so where's my 3 volts I'm missing 3 volts there's the missing 3 volts being dropped across the switch and the switch is getting hot so the overall resistance of my circuit has gone up so R has gone up therefore I current must come down and that's what we can see here our current has dropped from what was 16 amps is now reading 11.4 the sure sign that we have a voltage drop in the circuit somewhere where there shouldn't be one so let's summarize what we've done in parts a b and c in a series circuit current is the same in all parts the total resistance rt is the sum of each of the individual resistances or each of the components next the algebraic sum of the voltage drops in a circuit equals the applied voltage that's that Kirchhoff's voltage law stuff so all the voltage drops have got to add up to the applied voltage or the applied voltage Ohm's law is used to find unknown voltages resistance currents values in the circuit so the whole thing still Ohm's law applies to it all in a series circuit the power taken or the total power taken is found with any of the power equations we can use all the three power equations from our Ohm's law wheel the sum of the power taken from each component equals the total power so that's an important part of power all the powers of the individual components P1 2 3 4 5 etc all that up add up to the total power an open circuit anywhere in the circuit prevents any component from receiving power because there's no current flowing therefore no power in a series circuit the voltage drop across an open circuit equals the supply voltage and this is the thing that tricks a lot of people to go oh I've got voltage across this lamp or this component therefore it should be working well not necessarily because if the component has an open circuit then it's probably why you're seeing an unusually large voltage across that component a short circuit will cause an increase in the circuit current because a short circuit decreases the overall resistance therefore it must increase the overall current that's that's Ohm's law that's the way the physics works the voltage drop across a short circuit is always going to be zero effects that cause faults can cause just a change in resistance as I mentioned the little example that we used before where we've got a switch and the switch contacts maybe were dirty or not closing properly so you end up with a high resistance so that's the end of our lesson 6 part C I hope you've learnt a whole heap more about how to problem solve and power around DC series circuits